and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Michelle Hebert. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DBTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Michelle Hebert, a consultant at Pixlog and VP of Professional Development at DEMA International. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Michelle, hello and welcome. Hi, hello, Shannon. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very good, very good, thank you. Uh, so welcome. So you're a consultant at Pixlog Incorporated and the VP of Professional Development at DAMA International. Mm-hmm. So let's start with Pixlog. So tell me about what type of business is Pixlog and what do you do as a consultant there? Well, it's, it's basically my own company for myself, working as an independent consultant. Uh, it's a company that has been active, well, exists since 1999, 91, 1991, uh, wow. really active since uh, 2017. Um, and uh, I'm basically just doing contract for my clients. Most of them are dealing with data quality or data modeling, uh, data conversion from one or legacy system to the new system. Uh, and I'm also doing some coaching on data governance implementation for some of my clients. Mm, very, very nice. So um, you're also the VP of professional development at yep. Dama International. So tell me about Dama International. Well, Dama International is a large organization that, I don't know, many thousand people join uh, either directly or through chapters throughout the world. We have more than 60 chapters. And the goal of Dama International is really to promote the good practice in data management. Uh, We publish the DMBOT, the Data Management Body of Knowledge, which is like Mm -hmm. this big book here that I have always beside me. I don't know if you're going to see it. Yay! So, yeah. <laughs> so the big book here, and we also have a certification, the CDMP, Certified Data Management Professional, uh, where you mm-hmm. can go through exam or exams, plural, if you want to get to a higher level. And it mm-hmm. really helps you to uh, promote your skills and experience on data management. And as a VP Professional Development, my specific role right now is to work on the next uh, evolution of the DMBOC, the Data Management Body of Knowledge, which is a mm-hmm. large endeavor, and to mm-hmm. synchronize the CDMP, the exams, and the process uh, according to how we evolve the, 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 the body of knowledge. Oh, I love that. So what version of the DMBOC are we on now? Are you right now, on? the current version is version 2 revised. So it's mm-hmm. basically the version 2 was published in 2017, and mm-hmm. we made the revision uh, last uh, April, uh, April 2024, okay. which is most uh, are, are like correction of English or sentence that were not clear, but there are a few chapters, a few sections that were a bit more up- updated. Yeah, I love it. I will, you know, most of the community won't be able to see, but because um, there it's mostly audio, but you can see I've got mine here as well with my tabs. Yay, and- yay. So you're <laughs> studying to do your CDMP if you have like that, right? Someday. <laughs> someday but we just uh had one of our staff um uh mark horseman go through yeah. and get his master's in yep. uh so cdmp so he he is at a master level which is very exciting so um we highly recommend and we offer the training for it as well because we believe it in a, as data diversity so highly recommend that um so uh because that certification certainly helps to boost careers right yes. which is what data diversity is all about Yes, yes. Um, so tell me, uh, Michelle, so well, let's back up. So this is what you're doing now. Um, but 
is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? So say you were six years old. Did you think, <laughs> oh, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a, a data Well, manager. when I was six years old, there were no uh, computers. <laughs> 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 our computers were just like for NASA or things like that. So uh, mm -hmm. I, when, when I was a teenager, uh, I learned to fly a, a single engine airplane. Oh, and uh -huh. I wanted to do a career in uh, aeronautics somehow. So the uh -huh. first uh, training I got out of general, general school and high school and everything was to become an aircraft maintenance engineer to repair aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, but I graduated in uh, 82 in the middle of a recession. So uh -huh. all the large companies were just laying off people because people were not flying anymore. So yeah. I got a few jobs left, right, and center, but nothing really that I wanted to do as, as an aircraft menace. And I decided, okay, I'm, I'm tired of that. I will switch. And I look around. I did some classes in, in school before, just introduction to programming. And I kind of like it. I said, I'll, I'll go toward computer. And I registered for a certificate, 30 degree uh, undergraduate program at University of Montreal on, on computer science. And it was mm -hmm. night courses. Uh, mm -hmm. So I could have a job during the day. And through some mm -hmm. contacts, I started to have a client. And I started programming for that small system. And it was the beginning of the PC, right? So right. big companies as mainframe or mini computer and didn't mm -hmm. know what to do with PC. But I was just learning on, on, on personal computer. So I started yeah. programming on that some business application. And this is uh, where I switched to, okay, let's do that as a full-time job. I took another program, a certificate, and uh, as a business school because I said, I told myself that if I wanted to be efficient in developing application for the business, might as well yeah. learn the language of the business, right? Yeah. So I took some classes on accounting, uh, operation, human resources, finance, and so on, marketing. So I learned the language of the business. It, Having a business of my own is also useful, but I really learned yeah. the language of the business. So when I went to see my users to uh, gather the requirements, I understand what they're, they were talking about, I had a better understanding of it. I mean, accounting told me about the credit and debit columns. I knew what it was. So uh, I, I think it was a good move for me uh, to do that. Oh, that is fascinating and so smart um, to do that and understand both sides of the business. I think that's where some of the biggest gap is in, in data. And, you know, I mean, that's the constant battle that we've heard, you know, for since tech's been around, right? The, mm -hmm. the battle between IT and business and how they can't communicate, right? But if you taking classes to understand both sides, that communication, it helps bridge that gap. So yep. very, very smart. Well, so, okay, so you, you, um, you're in programming, you're majoring in programming, uh, you're taking some business classes. So so what was that first job then? Um, the, you, yeah, the first full-time job I got as as uh, in, in IT was a an analyst, a developer for a software company in Montreal. Uh -huh. Actually, it was not uh -huh. a software company. It was a, an engineering company that developed program for, for preventive maintenance in, in institutions uh -huh. and industries. And they wanted to have the software to 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 sell to the client as a platform for their own services, uh, engineering services. So I was part mm -hmm. of the team who developed that. Uh, it was in Clipper. I don't know if you remember Clipper. It was something. <laughs> it was in the eighties, late late eighties, the early nineties. So Clipper uh -huh. was the language to develop business application on a PC back then. Uh, so and and our company not only developed package for our client, we also develop a Clipper application generator. So, uh -huh. so what you see is what you get. So we could draw our data screen and it will generate the code and the, the DBase files and everything in the back. So I was part of that team to develop this as well. And it gave me a good understanding of, of the importance of good data modeling. It was not as rigorous as it is today. But still, right. I mean, we we really have to understand how the data is structured to meet the business requirements, and then the, the, create the application for that. So oh, there for a few yeah. uh, a few years, and then uh, actually went back to school to finish to finish my major in computer science, so I could have actually a back, uh, so uh -huh. a graduate student, and then got hired through different uh, consulting company, uh, Anderson Consulting. In, 
way back then. Uh, LGS, mm -hmm. a, a, a large uh, consulting company based in Montreal for Can Canadian clients. And, and then eventually worked for uh, uh, MediaGriff, which was a, a company that developed B2B application. Mm -hmm. I was the director for the internal systems there. So I was managing uh, the... Uh, uh, the, the systems for the company itself. I was not part of the development of the product, but we're managing the, the system to manage our company. And then yeah. went back to LGS IBM as a bin manager because LGS was purchased by IBM services, global services by then. A uh, couple of years there and then work at Yellow Pages again to work on development and, and data migration and data conversion and a master data project. Uh, so a master data uh, implementation. So this is where I learned a lot of skills on data integration and 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 more complex data modeling. Let's put it that way. But then uh, in 2017, uh, they decided to outsource my position along with other people. And I decided, well, if I'm going to be outsourced to a consulting company, I might as well form my own company. And I, I restarted to be active too. I started again to be active in, in, in my own company and never stop, never look back. It was the best thing that ever happened to me to be outsourced and, and <laughs> physically laid off in, in indirectly. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. that's... And, and something else I did yeah. that, has a, that has a big impact on where I am right now yeah. is in 2013 to 2016, I decided to go back to school to actually do a master degree in computer in software engineering. Uh, and I did that at the same time I was working. And it is during that study of or doing my SF on, 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 on during for that master, the, sorry, for my master that I selected as a topic reference data. Mm. So I had to what? search for article and book and references and things like that. Yeah. And this is when I found the first version of Dama DM book because I didn't know that before. Yeah. I read through the DM book, said, okay, I want to do this. I want, I want to get certified. But it was in the between version one and version two. So at that uh -huh. time, Dama International just stopped doing the certification because they want to revamp all the exams and everything. Mm -hmm. And I I was a I was on the mailing list to be informed when it was going to be available and when the, they informed that it was going to be at EDW in 2019 in Boston, I registered uh -huh. for the event. That was my first conference, EDW conference in 2019 in Boston, and I did my three exams during that week and got my certification. So that wow. was a turning point in my career. It's both my master degree and getting my CDMP because it it really. It boosts my confidence in my own skills and my own expertise. And the other thing that I found out at EDW was the community of people in data management is extraordinary. It's it's, right? it's so friendly. We you can yeah. talk to anyone and everyone over there. Nobody will 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 look down to you because you're a newbie. Uh, right. I'm, this is the first time you mentioned Mark Orsman. This is where I found I met Mark for the first time, and we spent yeah. the hours together chatting on different things, as well as uh, uh, Chris Bradley and and a lot of other people that I met uh, during that conference, and that then became friend kind of. So that was uh, that's a amazing. point in my career. I said okay, now I know where I want to go. I want to be part of that community. I want to be part of that organization that, that might. Yeah. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. I love that. And so that would mean, I mean, that was, um further down in your career too, that you decided to go and get your master's and yep. get certified. And um, it's really, really impressive. Um, and I love, you know, the stories that I hear from people in data, not just about the community, but just there's this constant passion for continuing to want to learn and being mm -hmm. open to learning and exploring new things and possibilities. And I think it's just kind of the nature of tech, right? Because um, or, you know, in data, um, which isn't always 
dealing with tech. Um, uh, it's there's just always constant involvement. You have to keep up. You have to be curious, and and this I love it. Um, and, and I didn't know that uh, that's how you got involved with Dema and and uh, in data. And I'm low, and on, it's an honor that you came to Enterprise Data World EDW uh, to to meet the community. I do. I, it's I tell people all the time. It, it's one of the great honors of working for a data diversity. It's working, being able to work and serve the community because they are just amazing, constant inspiration of what it means to be a community and, and mm -hmm. uplifting and kind and just passionate about what it is everybody does. It's just, it is, it's awesome. Um, so, oh, so <laughs> very, very cool. So, um, so tell me then what's been your biggest uh, lesson so far in your career? Oh, that's a good question. What's my <laughs> biggest lessons? Well, yeah. well, nothing is easy, but many things are doable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been on, 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 well, from a data perspective, it's, if we take like the last few years where I've been involved in different projects, uh, mm -hmm. one of the challenge we have as a, for example, data modeler or data quality is to, uh, especially when you have a new project and there's a, like a good team of very good people, but young developers, and they yeah. all learn the techniques about programming and they care about the, the algorithm and, and the business and the layer and the architecture of the application and everything. But then you come along and said, yeah, but what about the data? Well, we'll figure it out sometimes. No, 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 no. We have to start yeah. with the data. The, the, the application, the software is there to manage the data. Let's start with the data. Let's start to understand what the data means. And it, yeah. I don't mean by that, that you have to create a full data model, all details before you actually start working, but you have to get a, a broad understanding of what are the entities, what are you going to deal with? And that to be able to pass those messages requires a lot of soft skills. I mean, it's not just learning how to do the data modeling, how to use those tools and things like that. It's how to communicate uh, to the people what you mean and why it's important and how to motivate the people to follow you on that path. And that's our, that requires soft skills. And luckily, mm -hmm. I'm also a teacher, so I know how to, I've been teaching for many, many years, different topics. So those skills are transferable in that part of my mandate when I have to explain to people why it's important and so on. So tell me a little bit about the, the teaching. How did you get into that and where did you get into that in your career? Well, when I was a teenager, I told you I learned the, uh, to, to fly a single engine because I wasn't uh -huh. The Canadian Air Cadets. And part of the Canadian Air Cadet uh, training is also to teach you how to train, how to become an instructor. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the senior cadets that, the, that give the classes for the, uh, the to the junior cadets, the, to youngers. And then for four years, when I was still in, in schools, my job, my summer job was working on the uh, uh, a summer camp for Air Cadets, where I was actually, the last two years, uh, the commanding officer of a school for teaching other kids how to fly, the, the training, mm -hmm. the, the ground school, the, the, the theoretical training. So this is where I started to teach. And during my career, I always had like side jobs of teaching either at schools or in a professional uh, uh, training organization or through my clients uh, when it was time to, to to give a training on the new system or new software, I was giving. The, I was the one being picked because I like that, and yeah. the other programmers didn't like that. So, so oh, I can do it. It's not a problem. So I always. I mean, I mean if I look at throughout the my like, forty years out of careers, I don't think there's been a year where I was not teaching something at some place. Huh? Uh, and now, after I did my master's degree, because I was pretty good because of my experience. Uh, the yeah. department hired me as a lecturer, so I continued to to give uh, to give classes there uh, on data governance and data quality and wow, among other things. Wow, you are there's so many things that you've dipped your toe into. You're you're doing so many things. That's amazing uh, to give back and to uh, to continue to hone your skills. Um, and I love that you're, again, your story is a, one of passion, that it, that your passion of flying taught, let you, the experience of teaching, which you keep, continue to use in your career. Um, so important. Uh, and 
Are, are you still flying? No. No. Uh, yeah. I stopped. I stopped very long time ago. Uh, yeah. It was fun while I was like just living at my parents, and I had a job yeah. and no more expenses. But when I started to uh, date my wife and we decided to get married and buy a house and everything, I had to set my priorities straight. <laughs> and renting a single engine plane was even back then pretty expensive. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I always told myself that I might go back when I retired, but I don't know yeah. when that will happen. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you should get John to take you up, John Ladley. Yeah, no, I, I chatted with John last time about his flying and everything. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> so, so tell me, um, having worked with data for for so long, especially throughout almost all of your career, um, what is your definition of data? My definition of data evolved over time. I mean, when I was younger, it was really what I put in a database. Uh, now my definition of data is way broader than that. It's basically what you need to make a decision. Yeah, uh -huh. All the decision people make on any topic whatsoever in our brain, it's based on information. It could be structure, right. unstructure. It could be feelings or emotion. It's kind of an information as well. But mm. I mean, the broader definition of data is really what we need to make a decision. And without going into the details of all the politics going around the world, there's a lot of decisions that are being made by many people with information that is dubious at, more, at, at, at best, right? So right. how can we improve all the information that people have to make good decisions? And I see that as my ultimate goal in data management is to improve yeah. the information people have to make their decision. Which oh, really I love that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. We should all adopt that. The world would be a little bit better. Yeah, I think. Well, now, obviously for when you go back to what happened in a company, uh, in any corporation, when you work on data governance implementation or data management or master data, then the data is the information that is that company is being required to actually put into their process. But any mm -hmm. process, again, is to make decision on what to deliver, right. when to deliver, or which markets we should address and which market we should get out of because it's not it's not lucrative and so on. So all the data is always a fuel to make a decision. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very true. Um, so then do you see the, especially with that vision, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Well, number of jobs. Uh, well, first of all, because everybody in a company actually some point in time make a decision, they're all using data. The mm -hmm. challenge is is not necessarily to increase the number of people or jobs that are related to data, but to increase the understanding of everybody on what the data is and how it should be used and to, mm -hmm. to have a critical view of the data they have before taking a decision and, and ask themselves, is it good data? Is it the, the data I need? Is it, or do I miss something, right? Now, obviously, there's always a gray area where you still have to make a decision without all the information available. You cannot stop, but at least try to go into the I mean a critical analysis of the data you have, you think you have, and 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 ask yourself, is it the correct information to, for me to make a decision? So it's, it's going to become yeah. Sorry, sorry, Shannon. It's, so it's not necessarily increasing the number of jobs that people will will use data or that are data related, it's really increasing the understanding of all people working with data on what data is and how it should be useful or used. It makes a lot of sense. And everybody now works with data on some level. So everybody needs some kind of education in, in, data, man in, in data usage and yep. what yep. it is and you know, how to communicate to their data architects <laughs> for what they need, <laughs> right? Um, so then what advice would you give people looking to get into a career in data management specifically? So whether they're, you know, a data architect or data modeler or data scientist, what advice do you have for people getting into well, data? If, if you're coming from the IT side, 
take time to learn the language of the business people, mm -hmm. right? Because you will have to communicate and understand them. You have to communicate uh, your motivation and your priorities in such a way that it's 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 understandable by the business people and and they they see why it's important to you to do that. As a mm -hmm. I, oh something else I am doing on my free time I translate books right so I yes. translate a few books from English to French so Bob Siner's books as well as mm -hmm. Scott Tyler and telling your data story and and Scott always said in his book and I totally support his vision do not go to executive and say, we need to improve data quality. Doesn't mean anything to them. Find yeah. a way in a business language, in a business vocabulary to say, what will be the consequences of that? So we will improve revenue, we will decrease the client complaints. What are we going to do from a business point of view? And to be able to really do that, you need to understand how the business works. So get your nose out of IT or your, 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 your computer screens and yeah. understand the business, especially business in general and the specific business you're working on. If you're coming from the business side, then you have to learn a little bit about the, the constraint of the development and database management, not become a, not to become a database administrator, but to understand the, the, the consequences of what you're asking. Which is, I've seen user ask something that from their point of view is very simple. It's not that simple to implement in, in real life. Yeah, I agree. So do you have advice on like how the best way to go about it? I mean, I, for me, um, I know it was just, I got a long way. I went along, it went a long way for just to ask questions, to, mm -hmm. to not pretend like I knew, just to ask a lot of questions. Is that the place to start? Because, you know, somebody to understand the business might be sound really intimidating, but um, it can be pretty simple, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It, it can be simple. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be complex. You, you will not be managing the company, but you just need to understand the vocabulary of the company. And by yeah. all means, don't forget to come to conferences or be involved in your community. If you have a Dama chapter, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little publicity here. If you have a Dama <laughs> chapter in your locality, join, yeah. participate in those activities uh, and yeah. meet other people that are doing the same job of you in other companies and, and just share your experiences and things like that. Uh, and yeah. obviously, if you want to get CDMP certified, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, indeed. Um, oh, Michelle, this has been uh, fabulous. It's been so great to talk to you about your journey. Um, I would be remiss, though, if I didn't ask if somebody wanted to solicit your services, how would they find you? Oh, the easiest thing is through LinkedIn. Okay. So, uh, yep. You can find me on LinkedIn. That's the easiest way. Perfect. And, uh, and how do the people learn more about Dama International and the uh, chapters and well, the there's a, we, yeah, we have our website dama.org, dama.org, uh, and there's a list of chapters that are active or forming uh, with their website. Uh, so you will see, as I said, about sixty-five ish right now, as of today, uh, chapters. And uh, then just send an email and request for information to uh, Dama and we'll be happy to uh, answer your question. Ah, oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. It was a thank you for asking me to be here. <laughs> well, uh, for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up on the latest in podcasts and on the latest in data management education, you can go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.